Well, let's talk to Lord Fawkes, uh, uh, Labour's uh, peer and a co-chair of the all-party parliamentary group on older people, who joins us now to talk about this. Good morning to you, Lord Fawkes. Good morning, Julia. Thank, thank you, you very well indeed. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, you are very much of the view that when the BBC decided to uh, uh, take over, well, they had responsibility uh, under George Osborne when he was Chancellor to take over, uh, basically covering the cost of these free licence fees for over 75s. You have the view they made the wrong decision in saying that it should in future be means tested and not available to everyone from their 75th birthday. So presumably you think the BBC is wrong now for, ex- not for finally ending that grace period. Yes, I do. Uh, this is all of res- the result of a dirty deal between the government and the BBC. The government effectively blackmailed the BBC into taking on responsibility. And then the BBC uh, abandoned uh, pensioners. Uh, I've got a letter. I get lots of emails and letters from uh, older people. Uh, this lady says, I'm 83 years old. I did have a free license, which was t- taken away by the BBC. BBC pays huge wages to certain staff, hoping you're able to bring back free TV license. I rely on TV to keep me going. Uh, That's from an 83-year-old lady. I get many of those. And it really is disgraceful because all the people, particularly those living alone and particularly during a pandemic, rely on the TV for vital information as well as entertainment. And uh, the license fee may be relatively little for you and me, uh, Julia, but for a pensioner, uh, relying on their basic pension, living alone, it's a very substantial amount. And that's it. It, it, it. it is, again, a lot of people who make these decisions don't have any understanding of what it's like to live on those lower incomes. And although, of course, it is means tested, um, and I'm actually... I'm, I'm in principle in favour of the means testing if it does make more sense. I think it's a bit ridiculous that my parents, who frankly are doing, have done very well for themselves in their late 70s, should get a free licence fee. But someone living on, uh, on benefits in a council estate in their 20s has to pay for it. Um, I, think, I think there is an argument for that. But the point about this means testing is it's only the very poorest pensioners on the very, very lowest incomes who, who, who are going to uh, get offset. And, and, and a huge number of pensioners simply won't qualify because even though they're on the very lowest incomes, they're not claiming pension credit often we have particularly the older generation really strong sense of pride and this belief that you know you don't want to rely on what they might consider charity it isn't it's something they're perfectly entitled to but they don't claim often the benefits they need and so they won't qualify even though financially they would qualify and that makes it even harder you're absolutely right there are over a million people who are entitled to pension credit who don't claim it and they're losing out on a free TV license as a result. And in spite of campaigns by Age UK, Independent Age, Age Scotland, many others, uh, there hasn't been the level of take-up uh, that we would ho- have hoped. Uh, and, but however, uh, this lady blames the BBC. I think the blame really lies with a Conservative government because it was a Tory manifesto promise uh, to keep the free TV mm-hmm. license. Now they have an opportunity to keep that promise. I've just introduced a private member's bill to the House of Lords, which would change the law and put the responsibility back onto the government. So if they support my private member's bill, then they can keep their promise. Well, what, it's what unusual about a... for a Labour peer to give the <laughs> Tories an opportunity to keep their promises. Wouldn't it be a simple solution, simple solution if the BBC just cut their cloth? They took on this deal. They got a big uh, boost in their funding. They they get billions of pounds from... I mean, we can call it a licence fee. It's a tax. If you own a television, it's a tax on owning a TV. You don't watch... You can never watch a single minute of BBC television or listen to BBC radio and you still have to pay it. It's a tax. Uh, you go to prison if you don't pay a fine, if you don't pay the, the fee that it's a tax um why don't we simply say to the bbc you need to cut they've got i mean thousands upon thousands of people earning silly salaries most of the people i know who work at the bbc haven't got a clue what most of those people do they've all been sitting around in their pjs doing zoom uh, uh you know, conference calls throughout the last year i'm not sure that's done anyone any good they we, we don't have to have a million different radio stations we don't have to have all these digital channels they they can cut their cloth get down to what they should be which is the public service broadcaster if they did that they could easily easily afford to keep those free licence fees for poorer pensioners. But Julia, you can criticise the BBC and I agree with some of your criticism and I can criticise the Tory government and even you might agree with some of my criticism. But surely all the people living alone, relying on the BBC for vital information shouldn't be the ones that suffer from No, this. I agree with and you. surely but... the BBC and the government should get together. If you and I persuade them, Julian, mm. there's a, an unholy alliance, persuade <laughs> them to get together 
and find a solution. But I just offered you a very simple solution. Here's the thing. Realistically, do you really think that we are going to, I mean, given how many people get hauled up into court, I mean, for, you know, I think one in 10 cases at magistrates courts before the pandemic were people who had not paid their license fee, nearly always women, interestingly. uh, But um, 3.9 million over 75s who needed to make a new TV license arrangement as in to actually pay it. Of those, 3.6 million have done. So we've only got this, uh, they think, you know, roughly 260,000 pensions who've yet to pay. Um, If they still refuse to pay, um, the government, you know, so the, the, the police are going to start turning up. The bailiffs are going to start turning up. They refuse to pay the fine. They end up in court. Realistically, the first absolutely gorgeous, wonderful, you know, old lady in her 80s who gets hauled off in handcuffs to, to, to prison. I mean, the, 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 the policy is going to change overnight, isn't it? You know that. And I know that. Everyone knows that. The BBC would be insane to prosecute these people. Well, I hope you're right. My colleague, Ian Botham, who's joined us in the, the Lord recently, has taken this up with the BBC, mm-hmm. and they said they won't prosecute. But I, I'm, I'm not so sure. You know how these things happen? Uh, it just goes through the machinery, and they find uh, that there's, a, as you say, a lovely 83-year-old lady in court, uh, and uh, some changes have to be made. So I hope before that happens, the government and the BBC will see sense, get round the table, find a solution, and if it's a solution is acceptable to you, Julia, and to mm-hmm. me, uh, then uh, that's the way forward. Yeah, quick here, here to that, Lord Fuchs, uh, co-chair of the All Party Parliamentary Group on older people uh, in the in the uh, in Parliament there.